So the main four frequencies used in FPV is 900 megahertz, 1.3 slash 1.2, and I'll touch on that as well, 2.4 gigahertz, and 5.8 gigahertz. So each frequency has its pros and cons. Uh, some frequencies will work for you and others will not. Some may work in different applications and some may work better in other applications. One thing to note is each frequency has its own different sized antennas. Antennas can also be a determining factor on picking your frequency. I'm gonna go ahead and start here on the lowest end of the spectrum and that's the 900 megahertz uh, video system. Now I've got here a 900 megahertz video receiver and I've got two different 900 megahertz video transmitters. And there's all different types and different sizes of these transmitters. And those sizes are determined by the milliwatts. For example, this one is a 200 milliwatt video transmitter in the 900 megahertz frequency. So that means this puts out 2.2 watts of video power. So what does that mean? That means that this thing can transmit in a, a certain range. So the, t the different size and the different milliwatts can also make an effect on your rig. Talking about the 900 megahertz system, most people don't use the 900 megahertz system because it also runs near the GSM band. That's the cell phone band. So if you're flying near a uh, cell tower in the GSM band, you could have some interference. The really good thing about the 900 megahertz band is it's very, very low. Its wavelength is very, very low, and it's able to penetrate objects very well, such as trees, hills, buildings, things of that nature. 900 megahertz also plays well with 2.4 gigahertz RC control. So if you're gonna fly your aircraft on the 2.4, 900 megahertz will be a good choice because the band is so far apart, you won't get any interference. Another con about the 900 megahertz system is the antennas. As you guys can see, I've got a couple different choices of antennas, and as we go up in the antennas, the antenna sizes just get bigger. I don't have any circular polarized antennas for the 900 megahertz, but if I did, they'd probably be the size of a small melon. I do have some inverted V antennas and we'll get into the details about upgrading your antennas shortly. Moving on down the line, I've got my 1.2 slash 1.3 gigahertz video system. Now, 1.2, 1.3 is usually right in the middle of the frequencies that we use. The most common and the legal frequencies in the United States is 1258 and 1280. Those are the two most common video frequencies used for long range. And the reason they're used for them is because they are low in their bandwidth, that they're, they're low in their frequency, they're able to reach long distances and penetrate very, very well. Now I've got a video receiver here that covers from 910 megahertz all the way up to 1360 megahertz or 1.3 gigahertz. However, these channels are obsolete in the United States because they are, most of these channels are illegal. Um, so most of the pilots use the 1280 or the 1258 frequency. Pros about the 1258, 1280 megahertz is extreme long range, excellent penetration, However, the bandwidth is very narrow, so your video quality could be degraded uh, compared to something a little bit in the higher band. Another uh, thing to touch on with the 1.3 gigahertz, your antennas. Your antennas are pretty large. I mean, this is, I would say, about the size of an orange. So you've got larger antennas to use. However, there are some other really cool antennas. This, for example, is the new Dragonlink 1280 video antenna that you can use. This antenna is a linear polarized antenna. We'll get into that here shortly. I've got here with me an 800 milliwatt transmitter and a 200 milliwatt transmitter. Again, all the difference is, is power output. Another thing to touch on with the 1.3 gigahertz antennas. When you do, and we'll get into details on this too, decide to use a directional antenna, you're gonna need a behemoth like this. Compared to the smaller antennas, again, this is uh, a bulky and larger antenna sizes, so this can help you in determining your frequency. 
1.3 gigahertz plays okay with 2.4 gigahertz so long as you have a low pass filter. What happens is the 1.3 gigahertz band can sometimes interfere and reduce your range of your RC control. So if you're going to be running the 1.3 gigahertz, your best bet is to use 433 megahertz or the UHF band to control your aircraft or vehicle. And we'll get into that later on in this series. Up until recently, you had to be using the 1.3 gigahertz receivers uh, of the larger size until more recently where we're able to use the modules that go into the Dominator goggles. All right, moving on down the line, we've got the 2.4 gigahertz video frequency. Now, one thing I will note about the two frequencies before is as long as you've got a receiver that can pick up the specific channel, you can get a transmitter that can transmit in that channel. Most video receivers and transmitters in the 1.3 and 900 megahertz are interchangeable. Moving up to the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5.8 gigahertz, you run into different bands. And we'll get into that as well. So touching on the 2.4 gigahertz frequencies. Now, as you can see, the antennas get smaller, a little more compact and more manageable. I've got here a 200 milliwatt, a 600 milliwatt, and a 1000 or a one watt video transmitter. Now, 2.4 is a great frequency to use if you're using UHF or say 72 megahertz, uh, the old AM bands. Um, however, you cannot use 2.4 gigahertz video if you're gonna be using 2.4 control. You're gonna have too much interference between the two components and your system is not gonna run at its optimal level. Touching back on the bands, I've got here an Immersion RC. This is a uh, immersion band transmitter Pat matched with the 2.4 gigahertz video receiver. Now, these are really rare. They don't make them anymore. However, they will be coming out, I believe, shortly with a uh, newer version of them. More commonly used is the LawMate. LawMate makes the 1 watt and the 500 milliwatt video transmitters. Now, uh, these transmitters are broadcast in the LawMate channel, so you will need a receiver that can pick them up. Going down to the directional antennas, I've got here a crosshair antenna in the 2.4 gigahertz system. As you can see, it's much smaller and it's much more easy to manage. 2.4 gigahertz offers decent penetration and pretty good range. Um, you're not gonna be getting the same penetration range as 1.3. However, the band is a little bit bigger in sense of video quality. You will get a slightly better video quality in a 2.4 gigahertz system than you will per se with a 1.3 or a 900 megahertz. Now moving on to the 5.8 gigahertz video system. This is going to be the most common video system used by uh, people just getting into the hobby or staying close or not extending their range. However, with the recent updates in technology and things getting better as we go, 5.8 is being able to reach some extreme distances. I personally have reached a personal goal on 5.8 gigahertz of four and a half miles of flight. That's one, one long range flight uh, without any obstructions. Touching on the obstructions, 5.8 gigahertz is a very, very tight band. What that means is you'll have much better video quality than the previous frequencies, however, this band is very tight, and if you imagine it, it would be like a fiber optic cable. If you're flying your aircraft and you decide to fly behind a tree, you're gonna snap that link. And don't, don't worry if you snap the link, it will come back as soon as you clear the object. However, few seconds in the air without any video could lead to a disaster. So 5.8 is not generally used for uh, low flying or flying behind objects or needing that penetration. It can be used with uh, certain antennas to reach those long ranges. However, 5.8 is not generally used for long range. Touching on the 5.8, as you can see, I've got a circular polarized antenna on my video transmitter. It's tiny. This thing is manageable and it's not much bigger than a dipole antenna. So that is one of the great qualities of the 5.8 system is you can run small antennas. Another great thing is you have a 5.8 gigahertz receiver compatible with most goggles so you can keep that portable and compact uh, video ground station. 
Now, touching on the 5.8 frequencies, this is the band A. This is the Immersion RC band. This brand the, will work with any of the Fat Shark goggles. However, these frequencies do not work with Boscam frequencies or some of the other Chinese frequencies. So if you're getting into 5.8 gigahertz, make sure that your receiver and your transmitter can talk to each other and it can pick up the same signal. There are a few, there is a, a certain receiver that works with the Dominator goggles that will pick up every single frequency of the 5.8 gigahertz. And uh, you could research that and locate that if you want to use the different frequencies. 5.8 gigahertz plays very well with 2.4 and any other component that you'll have. Uh, some of these other frequencies can also interfere with your GPS and we'll get into details with that on uh, placement. But 5.8 is one of the safest bands to use. It's so high up there that none of the other bands have interference. If you're going to be running a 2.4 gigahertz system, I suggest you run a 5.8 gigahertz video system. And uh, the main reason for that is your range and your video are pretty well matched. Uh, when I say that is if you're flying out and your range and you keeps going and you've got control and you lose video, uh, that could create some, you know, very hairy situation and vice versa. If you're flying out and you've got great video, but all of a sudden you lose RC control, you could also put yourself in another hairy situation. Okay. Another thing to touch on with the antennas, as you can see, I've got all different size antennas and they look really weird and peculiar. Most video systems will come with these linear polarized antennas. Now these are also called rubber ducky antennas. The good thing about these is they work pretty good. Um, you can get into all kinds of different specs as DBs and different things like that, which I'm not going to get into. If you have those particular questions, make sure you research them online. However, what this means is that a linear polarized antenna talks very, very well with a linear polarized antenna. For example, here, this is a dipole antenna, and this will talk very well with a linear polarized antenna. FPV was basically a security system hacked up and thrown onto an aircraft. What happens, what tends to happen is when you're flying your aircraft, you're banking, rolling, pitching, doing all kinds of stuff. The way these antennas like to talk is directly and straight through like this. Now, if your plane is banking and doing these kind of things, you're not getting a very good video signal. So there's a pioneer in this system, uh, Alex Grieve, I'd be crazy. He created these circular polarized antennas. Now, what these antennas do is basically as your aircraft is flying through the air, it allows for the aircraft to pitch and roll and make different movements while still maintaining a good video signal. This also allows uh, the reduction and the, the reducement of multipathing. Multipathing means that if you have video transmitter and a receiver and the video comes in, it's going to pick it up great here. However, the video signal is being transmitted in all different directions. If it bounces off a wall and comes back, you could create some video glitches and video issues and things like that. This is specific to uh, areas with buildings and large structures and rocks and things like that. So to increase your range, I personally would say go with a decent milliwatt, but upgrade your antennas. The better antennas you have, the better range and the better coverage you're going to get. So I hope I explained the video frequencies to you guys as best as possible. If uh, you guys have certain questions, you can leave that in the comments below. I'll try to do my best to answer them. You can also go on the forums and other uh, websites and research the different pros and cons of the frequencies. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next segment of this episode, which will be placement of your equipment on your craft. So once you've picked your vehicle, whatever you're going to either do FPV, whether it be an RC car, multi-rotor, or a fixed wing, equipment placement is very important. 